Fighting terror, government to register all Kenyans afresh through a digital platform. You are not obliged to comply with any other requirement because if regulations in legal notice number 23 of 2013 that the cabinet secretary is imposing by his own will against the provision of the law, then you are not obliged to comply with that. Standoff as government insists on enforcing new public transport rules despite court order. Over 70 people killed in a bomb attack in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. And residents of Turkana continue to flee their homes in the wake of rising cases of cattle rustling. This is KTN Prime with Yvonne Okwara and Wilson Buru. Well, a very good evening to you and welcome to the most comprehensive bulletin in the country. This is Katie and Prime. Many thanks for joining us tonight. Let's start off our bulletin with the plans the government has. They say they will register all Kenyans afresh to create a new national digital database. Now that database will seek to harmonize all current registers of persons. Deputy President William Ruto says this is one of the surest ways of curbing the current high levels of insecurity. Ben Kitili has the details. The Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government and that of Information, Communication and Technology will lead the exercise of registering Kenyans afresh. A national digital register is set to make it easy for the government to offer service more efficiently. The digital system of registration has also been marked as an important tool and mitigating insecurity as it will assist the state to identify any persons holding fake or forged identification documents. The two ministries have formed a joint technical team that is working on the modalities of rolling out the registration system. Registration has been estimated to take a period of six months once the infrastructure needed is in place. Deputy President William Ruto met officials from the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, to seek advice on how to best implement the new registration system. The IABC used biometric voter registration in the last general election. And although the polls system had a few issues, IABC maintains a digital database will make things easier even for them. Terrorist attacks and general insecurity in recent months have prompted a big security operation across the country, with much emphasis on Isli here in Nairobi which has been the bedrock of terror activities in the country. If they are foreigners, they must go home. You cannot say that you are, you are harassing people by taking them home. If they are perpetrating crime here, if they are committing crime here, we cannot, we cannot entertain them here at all costs. With the government on a soup to identify and deport illegal immigrants, the new system has been loaded as a big boost in tackling security challenges. This comes as a group of human rights activists hit out at the government Monday, accusing the police of abusing human rights in the ongoing security operation. For anybody who cares to see the brutality in the houses, in the streets, in the hotels, it's very visible. But we're talking about the opaque process. The latest police swoop was conducted in a Vasha Sunday night where 36 people, most of them of Somali origin, were arrested, while more were also arrested in Meru. Dozens more were arrested and detained in yet another operation in the coastal city of Mombasa over the weekend and were arraigned in court Monday. At the same time, Christian religious leaders have urged the government to seal security loopholes to prevent the loss of innocent lives. There seems to be reluctance and lack of vigilance in some security personnel causing illegal arms to increase and the criminal elements to operate freely 
in our country. Tumesema kwamba ifanyike kwa njia ambayo inaleta usawa wa kibinadamu njia ambayo haiduru mtu yeyote kupitia kwa pengine kabila ama dini. The operation started in Isli, Nairobi where hundreds have since been arrested and some have already been deported to Somalia. Ben Kitili, KTN. Well, that, that brings us to a big question tonight and we are asking, do you think fresh registration of people will help fight terrorism? Do you think fresh registration of people will help fight terrorism? This is an interesting one. We'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Please send us your thoughts on SMS. The number is 22155. Start with a yes or no, followed by a brief comment. And then you can also send us your comments on Twitter at KTN Kenya, at Wilson underscore Mburu, and at Yvonne acquire the hashtag. Tonight is Big Q, so do let us know your thoughts, and we will sample them throughout this live newscast. Now, Matatu owners and operators were a confused lot at the close of business today. The High Court ruled that the recently published regulations on public transport were null and void. However, Transport Cabinet Secretary Engineer Michael Kamau promptly disowned the ruling, insisting the regulations were still in operation. KTN's Edith Kimani reports on this crisscross, this criss-cross road PSV operators now find themselves in. It has been an eventful day for public service vehicle operators one that began with a court ruling at 8 a.m. High Court Judge George Odunga's order essentially quashed the new transport regulations. In his ruling, Justice Odunga said that by not laying down the new regulations in Parliament, Transport Cabinet Secretary Michael Kamau had acted unconstitutionally. The news meant one thing to Matatu operators. You are not obliged to comply with any other requirement because if regulations in legal notice number 23 of 2013 that the cabinet secretary is imposing by his own will against the provision of the law, then you are not obliged to comply with that. By 11 a.m., the news had reached most Matatu operators. And perhaps none were more affected than those who were queuing at the inspection yard waiting to have their cars cleared for meeting the new regulations. Ukimbisa 23 regulations in three months' time is uncalled for. And we are very grateful to Judge Odunga kwa vile amefanya hiyo ruling yake. The story, however, took a different turn at around 5 p.m. when Transport CS Michael Kamau denied any knowledge of a court order. We have not received any. And to the extent that we have not received it, we are operating like there is none. And here, but, mm. huh? <coughs> so it is here. It is now clear beyond our adventure. The back and forth between the court and the transport ministry now leaves the public transport sector in limbo with conflicting directives coming from two sources. As to who between the court and the cabinet secretary's order will be followed is something public transport providers will be grappling with tonight. Edith Kimani, KTN. Now, as confusion over the PSV rules reigns in Kangundo, one family was bidding farewell to their loved ones who perished in a road accident. Three children, their grandmother and grandfather, were laid to rest as local leaders called for action against PSV operators who are flouting traffic rules in Machakos County. Richard Tinira reports from Mayuni in Kangundo. Kangundo, Machakos County. Family and friends gathered to bid farewell to five members of one family who were among 13 people who perished in a road accident at the Isuvuni Bridge along the Masi Tower Road. Nine year old Mwe 
Mwende Mwasia, a class three pupil. Her three-year-old brother, Peter Mwasia, who was in nursery school. Nine-year-old Mwende Mwasia, a class three pupil. Her three-year-old brother, Peter Mwasia, who was in nursery school. And their baby brother, one-and-a-half-year-old Emmanuel Mwasia. <laughs> They perished on their way to pay dowry for Isabella and Thema, the mother of the three children who died. She missed most of the funeral service after she collapsed and was rushed to hospital. Her husband, Albert Moasia, lost both his parents. Albert and Isabella lost three of their four children, including their only daughter. They have now been left with only one child, seven-year-old Musembi Moasia. As Mayuni village bid farewell to the five, leaders were calling for action against the Makata Sako, whose matatu was involved in the accident that cut short the lives of the grandparents, three of their grandchildren, and eight other members of their extended family. Atuwezi kuwa na magari ambao inatembea na impunity. Ni lazima, tuwa, ni lazima tuangalie. Over 60 public service vehicles registered under Makata Sako were grounded for inspection following the Grizzly Road accident 10 days ago. Had everything, had everything gone according to plan, the diary payment would have paved the way for a wedding, tentatively slated for August this year. Now, the Moasia family has been left mourning the deaths of five of their own. Rita Tinina, KTN, Kangundo. Well, let's take you to Nigeria now, where more than 70 people have been killed, with 124 others nursing serious injuries following two deadly blasts at a crowded bus station in Abuja. Betty Kialo has the details. The explosions are said to have originated from a parked vehicle at the busy Nyanya bus station, killing at least 70 people and injuring 124 others. Many of those who were killed and injured are said to have been commuting to work when the 7 a.m. incident occurred. According to eyewitness, a deafening sound was heard seconds before the two blasts were heard. Bodies of the deceased were strewn all over the park, with hundreds of ambulances ferrying the injured to different hospitals in Abuja. The blast destroyed more than 30 vehicles, causing secondary explosions as their fuel tanks ignited and burned. Although there was no immediate claim of responsibility for the attack, Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan, while touring the blast site, pointed an accusing finger at the extremist group Boko Haram, urging Nigerians to remain vigilant. Security at the bus park has been tightened, with investigators coming through the scene for any leads into who could have been behind Mane's attack. Betty Kialo, KTN. Now a 13-year-old girl from a village in Kajiado Central has died while undergoing female genital mutilation. The class 6 pupil is said to have bled heavily from the ritual and died a few hours after going back home. Her parents are said to have colluded with other relatives to bury the girl secretly, but the area assistant chief got wind of the story and stopped the burial. However, the girl's parents had already fled their home and left the body in the Manyata. Police are pursuing those involved in the ritual. The victim's sister ran away to evade the cut and is currently at a children's home in Kajiado. Now, several families are fleeing the volatile Kakong village in Turkana South in fear of renewed attacks that have left over five people dead in the past one month. Groups largely comprised of women and their children are vacating their homes and are currently camping by the roadside. Masikandi now reports. 
This being the drought season in Turkana County, one would easily think these women are begging for either water or food, but all they really want is a lift, a ride. Today, however, the women are not lucky. They are among the 323 families in Kakong village relocating from their homes in fear of insecurity. Muliango yenyo imeshi mama akuna atakutembe akuna atakufanya nini dada punduki tu peke yake na wakati eh ai punduki nini Ekidor buried her husband and three sons. Kakong residents have been victims of suspected cattle rustlers besides Kaplibok and Kapsir villages that were attacked barely a week ago. The attack saw five people killed, including two Kenya police reservists who supplement the uniformed officers in keeping vigil in the region. <laughs> The Turkana KPR were disarmed recently in what the government says was for investigations. The state of KPR without guns leaving a village in fear of future attacks. So women and children carry what they can, but the most treasured is their lives. Home is no longer safe. Now report in the in Hacho. Inapo, inapo vajika. Mifugo inaenda kila wakati. Hata kama tunasema kuna askari, atuoni askari watuende kivipi. The sporadic raids resulting in the theft of livestock pushing a village to starvation. Some have sought refuge at Lokichar, while others resort to camping by the roadside, despite several barazas by the area chief to convince the village not to move. Hapa. Uh, population ya ya area yangu hii imepungua na hata mkiona sasa watu wanaanza kuhama nimejaribu kufanya mambaraza ya kuahimiza ya kwamba wa watulie serikali ya jubilee nilitetea wale ambao wamepoteza maisha walipigia hiyo serikali kura Inspector General David Kimayo was in Turkana last month promising to beef up security. To assure the, the, the residents that uh, there's enough security, we have enough officers on the ground, and uh, the areas are being patrolled on 24 hour basis. What the government is saying and what the residents witness on the ground seem to be two different worlds. The thorny relationship between the two communities resulting to this, empty villages and locked houses. Masi Kandiakati and Kakong village, Turkana County. Two prisoners drowned in a septic tank today tank today at uh, Kibos medium security prison in Kisumu city while draining sewage affluent emitted from the institution. Prison authorities say the prisoners who were serving a three and seven year term respectively were electrocuted while inside the 15 feet deep tank at noon as they tried to position a sucker pump that is used to emit the institution's effluent. The county's fire brigade had to pump out the tank's contents for three hours using a water generator before they could retrieve the two bodies which had been submerged. When a similar incident is said to have occurred at the in same the institution three decades ago in December 1985. The first prisoner who entered to empty the remainder of the water was electrocuted without the knowledge of the two others plus one prison officer who was escorting the three prisoners. A second prisoner decided to go and rescue because they could not tell what had actually happened to the first inmate. Now, the government says it will create a new national database that is a digital database in a bid to curb incidents of crime. And that story is the basis of our big question tonight. We are asking, do you think fresh registration of people will help fight terrorism? Do you think fresh, fresh registration of people will help fight terrorism? Tongue twister there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it happens. We're already seeing quite a bit of your feedback on our SMS line, which is 22155. And also on Twitter at KTN Kenya, at Wilson underscore Boru, and at Yvonne Okwara, hashtag Big Q. Keep your thoughts coming in. We will share them. 
during this live newscast and of course give you the poll results at the end of it. And after that, tongue twist, I clearly need a glass of water. So we take a short break. We'll be right back with more. Just ahead, man forced to take responsibility after months of neglecting his children. You're watching KTM Prime. Welcome back. We're glad you're watching Katie and Prime. Right now, it turned out to be a long day for a truck driver in Voy, Taitaveta County, after his wife dumped their twin girls outside a guest house, claimed to be his hideout. Yusuf Hamis's wife claimed that her husband had refused to care for their twins. She also claimed that he instead spent all his time with other women at the guest house. Oh, Tanzania. <laughs> Nikamwita nikamwambia kuna aje achoa watoto njiani yetu walitasika na watoto. Akanisikia kula kachukua la watoto. Akakimbiza jamaa aka, akakimbia na hii barabara akashukia hapa. Nikamwita huyu baba nikamwambia simama tuongee. Yule baba akanisikiza kweli akasimama. Alivyosimama akaniambia huyu mama si zongea naye chochote. Nikamwambia ni sawa hata sasa kiongee naye lakini naomba uangalie hao tu uangalie hao watoto. Huyu baba akanisikia sababu wana nafanya biashara zangu na kazi nikalala siku mbili nje akasema niko na wanawake nje na kwangu nje ndio maana amekimbia huku kuja kuniachia watoto ndio akakimbia akaacha watoto kwa sasa hata sisi jua ameenda wapi na ni mtanzania kwa hivyo amekimbia hao watoto ndio ameniachia Right, from those events in Taita Taveta County, let's remind you of our big question tonight. We're asking, do you think fresh registration of persons will help curb terrorism? This is in line with the announcement tonight that a new digital database of all Kenyan citizens will be created in the country. What are your thoughts? Let's sample some of them on Twitter. And Absolutely. On There's one here from Moruga and Jerry, and he says, no, we're forgetting those who cause terrorism as well, the Kenyans who will be registered as well. Right, King Kong, you say no, digital registration won't help curb insecurity because corruption is still a major thorn in the country's flesh. Kibbe DMX says, yes, there's a re this is a really easy way of stopping terrorism, investing in it, and new registration is a big step forward. Here's one from George's Kibe. You say, oh yes, it will greatly reduce the chances of more terrorists entering Kenya illegally. Let's do it, please. Well, let's take a short break now, but don't you go away because we'll be back with the day's business. Employers say they will not implement any minimum wage announced by the state this Labor Day. You're watching KTN Prime. My name is Boni Tunya. This is Business. The Kenya National Bureau of Statistics has initiated a process for the rebasing of the country's gross domestic product with results set to be released in September this year. A move that will see Kenya transform into a middle income country. So I sought to find out what exactly entails rebasing a country's economic data. According to the Development Blueprint Vision 2030, Kenya was expected to achieve middle income status by the year 2030. However, fast forward, and that target could be achieved in September this year, thanks to rebasing of Kenya's GDP. According to the World Bank data, Kenya's GDP stood at $40.7 billion, or just about 3.5 trillion shillings in 2012, with the forecast by the government set to grow by 5.5% this year. 
After September's rebasing, Kenya could be well on her way to $50 billion or just about 4.3 trillion shillings in GDP. So what exactly is rebasing? Rebasing is the changing of parameters used to calculate a country's economic data or simply changing the way statistics are measured. What causes an expansion of GDP after rebasing is the inclusion of new industries that were previously ignored in the calculations. For Kenya's case, this could be sectors like telecommunication, mobile money, transport, construction, mining and quarrying activities. Kenya's rebasing follows Nigeria's recalculation of its economic output, making it Africa's biggest economy. And the new figures will see Kenya sit prestigiously as Africa's fourth largest economy after Nigeria, South Africa and Angola. The new status comes with its fair share of challenges, with many analysts quick to warn that a middle-income economic status means that Kenya could lose its eligibility for grants and concessional loans, debt write-offs as well as vital preferential trade zones for its export products. Well, now you know. Now, the cost of funding associated with big ticket projects has left the Jubilee government in a tight financing fix, forcing it to turn to the private sector. For Treasury, the answer might just lie in unlocking the wealth in financial services. Here's KTN's Michael Karanja. Kenya is a country in the middle of an economic revolution. To get there, however, a number of infrastructure projects have to be completed to facilitate the envisioned growth. From transport to energy, the combined cost is estimated at 4 trillion shillings, nearly three times our current budget. This has proved a bridge too far for the government to cross alone. It's estimated uh, that Kenya faces an infrastructure funding gap of approximately $2.1 billion per year. So far, Treasury's public-private partnership unit has earmarked 55 projects to be undertaken the PPP framework with initial emphasis on local partners. According to the PPP unit, this is geared towards mitigating foreign exchange losses associated with foreign investor participation. Look at the Capital Markets Authority. There is what you call these asset-backed securities. And the act was passed. Uh, the amendments, the Kenya, Kenya, uh, market, Kenya uh, Markets Authority Act was passed uh, not very long time ago. But those instruments have not been tested. So because nobody has used them. And we would want to use them during this process uh, of preparing these projects. Treasury is initially targeting financial service providers to unlock the assets they hold to channel into development projects. The providers, however, lament the lack of proper investment instruments that would enable them to take part in big ticket projects. What we are trying also to do is that in our next uh, the change we want to make, in our guideline, we want to specifically put private equity so that it's very clear the scheme trustees that they can also go into private equity. Currently we just say other investment, so it's not a classified uh, investment line. Early in the year, President Uhuru Kenyatta signed into law the public-private partnership bill of 2012, signaling intentions to urgently roll out the projects already identified and approved by Cabinet. Michael Karanja, KTN Business. The Federation of Kenyan Employers says they will not accept any review of minimum wages by the government during this year's Labor Day celebrations as has been tradition. Here is Adelaide Chengole. Every year on the 1st of May, workers throng Uhuru Park in anticipation of the ever-present increment on the minimum wage. My government has awarded a salary increment of 14 percent and each time the government uses the high cost of living as the argument to justify this increment much the chagrin of employers we are committed to ensuring that the poor are cushioned but this year could be different as employers put their foot down on what they say is their unending and so far unheeded call to the government not to keep increasing the minimum wage without a proper process to justify the cost employers therefore do not expect and will not support any announcement on wage, wages this year. Through the umbrella body, the Federation of Kenya Employers, the group says the haphazard increments to minimum wage has made the country's workforce the most expensive in the region, a fact that has increased the cost of business and subsequently increased the cost of goods and services in the country. Kenya actually is being cited as the second most expensive city in our continent. The organization is also faulting the government's policy of increasing the minimum wage as a way to assuage the rising cost of goods and services without taking into account the productivity of workers and the ability of the economy to absorb those costs. Determining minimum wage on the basis of 
annual inflation alone, while ignoring the sluggish performance of the economy, is counterproductive. Instead, FKE is urging the government to sort out the issues that contribute to the high cost of living, thereby depleting the few coins workers have. If the cost of those basic necessities and services was contained, the pressure to add more money would go. Adelaide Changole, KTN Business. Now I have some sad news. Motorists will pay 55 cents more a litre of petrol in the latest review by the Energy Regulatory Commission. Petrol will retail at 114 and 16 cents from midnight tonight. However, the cost of diesel and kerosene dropped by a shilling and uh, 5 cents and 75 cents respectively. Diesel will now retail at 103 and 82 cents and uh, uh, down from 104 and 87 cents while consumers will pay 83 shillings and 16 cents for kerosene from a previous of 83 shillings and 91 cents. I bet you need to fuel up before midnight. Let's now take a look at the numbers with how your money is working for you as we go to the financial market report coming up next. business in association with all right i'm nicholas mudimba and this is kate in sports the azuri italy's and 20 national team arrived into the country ready for their friendly match against kenya's national and 20 soccer team the italian junior side will take one army stars junior side on wednesday before the second match against kenya's soccer big boys gurmahia the coach is in bullish mood and his charges will give a good account of themselves and give the counterparts enough mental strength Kenya's under-20 side takes on Tanzania's under-20 side in the Continental Soccer Championship second leg qualifiers in Dar es Salaam. Azuri's march is slated for 60,000 capacity seats at Safaricom Stadium. The Italians will leave the country on Friday. I'm appealing to Kenyans when we have a march on Wednesday. Six on, on Wednesday, 6 o'clock at Kasarani, we want everybody to come and support our national team. Our team is in camp. Our team is already in camp. More fans uh, is uh, for a good match. It's a good friendly match, but uh, it's a strong. But uh, because uh, when, when you want to, to play football, uh, we play against uh, any other team. Uh, uh, Kenya, I think, is want to win. Italia, I think, is want to win. KCB have parted ways with their two-season coach, Abdullah Juma, the former TK United coach, was fired in what the club described as a mutual agreement reached after he did not reach his target. The bankers are languishing at the basement of the log after nine rounds of matches. Tasker's lead was cut to a single point after losing against Sofa Parker. and exactly three days ago, KTN aired a story of coaches who are facing the axe following a dismal show. The coaches of City Stars, Robinson Ofoko, Nakuru All Stars, Oliver Page, as well as his understudy, Peter Okidi. Others were Western Steamers, Francis Barraza, James Nandwa, Abdallah Juma, Tahir Muhyiddin of Bandari FC, and Salim Ali. And today, only two, Okidi and Muhyiddin, are still in the clubs they began the season with. KCB have severed their relationship with veteran league coach Abdallah Juma. The club is fighting relegation battle and Juma unable to turn the southward trend. The bankers felt it was time for him to park and go. Francis Kimanzi's task remained part at the summit. Even as they lost their first league match against Sofapaka. Gormaya, who narrowly bagged three points against Ulinzi Stars, are two points adrift the Pesetas. Sofapaka, Chemil Sugar, and Tika United wrap up the top five teams on the league log. Tasca and fifth place, Tika United are separated by four points. 
This year's secondary school games get underway on Tuesday in Shanzu Teachers Training College and Shimula Tower Secondary School. All the participating teams have arrived ready for the coastal showdown with main sponsors Brookside sprassing up the venues in readiness for the teams. Arrivals were all but complete as schools from all over the country gathered in Mombasa ahead of the Brookside Dairy Secondary School Games which start Tuesday at the Shimula Tower School and Shanzu Teachers College. Basketball and hockey will be under particular scrutiny as well as rugby, the latter which has churned out great prospects for the national rugby teams in recent years. In girls basketball title holders Shimba Hills must award of competition from rivals beginning with Tigoi in their opening match. Although the last time they met in 2012, Shimba Hills dominated 125-14. The Lake region will look to St. Mary's Mabera to start well against senior chief Ogle from Garissa, who will be desperate to shed the tag of perennial underachievers. In boys basketball, Mandera will hope to avoid a chastening first date when they open their campaign against Upper Hill, while homeschool St. George's of Mombasa will look to find support when they square out with friend school Kamusinga. In boys hockey, Maseno entertain Thomas Fisher of Metropolitan, while Mombasa's St. Charles Luanga take on Kangaroo from Northern Zone, among other matches. In boys rugby, look out for Maseno when they come up against the Lions of Abadeas on day one. Other games to be contested include swimming and the decathlon. Ferdinand Mundi, KTN, Mombasa. And of course, we'll be giving you all the results and what is going on in the coastal town the school games now to motorsport over 40 riders squared it out in the second round of the national cross-country championships held at the Lush environments of the soy safari lodge at Baringo over the weekend smarting for a win for the first round of the championship shivam vinayak was on the course to solidify his championship lead in the bike category it was thrilling to watch vinayak as he navigated to win his category by a wide margin in the bike category hotly contested champion Vincent Bolinger. Ezean Duncan who came out victorious. The quad category was dominated by Christian Collett after reigning champion Shazan while bowed out. Navigational issues characterized the car category but was at the end won by Eddie Belcher who led from start to finish. The third round of cross country takes place at Selingen and Sultan Hammond. Beverage company Coca-Cola have unveiled a sponsorship package of 2.3 million shillings for Easter Golf Tournament, the Tana Hill Shield. The tournament was added its 90th edition this year and is slated for the 18th to 20th of April. The tournament was inaugurated in February 1924, then famously known as the Easter Tournament. The tournament has over the years acted as a breeding ground for amateur golfers out to hone their talents. The Royal Nairobi Golf Club has been the venue of the tournament since its inception. The organizers believe this year's championship will be more competitive. <laughs> we look forward to having quality golf, competitiveness and spirit of championship. We are very proud as Royal Nairobi Golf Club to be having this event, the 90th event, as Kenya celebrates its 50th independence. Arsenal will take on Hull City in the final of the FA Cup after Hull showed pedigree to edge out giant killing Sheffield United 5-3. In Spain, Atletico Madrid's charge towards his first Spanish title since 1996 shows no sign of faltering after Diego Simeone's men and a vital win at Getafe. We never know Arsenal can also be shocked by Hull City, who knows. And for the swimming lovers, Michael Peps is back from retirement. I'm Nicholas Mudim. Have yourself a good night. ATN Weather Forecast. Well, the government says it's going to register Cody once again on a digital platform and that formed our basis of our big question tonight. Uh, question tonight and the results are in 59% of you said no, 41% of you said yes. And uh, here is one, um, Edwin Muthabuko, you say, in my opinion, it won't work. I suggest we have firm policies in immigration.
There's one here from Abdirahim Tawane in Nairobi who says, no, the government could instead have invested in the intelligence service, which for sure is the only tool that can reduce crime in the country. Those are your views tonight. We thank you for joining us. But we want to um, just give you a teaser. Tomorrow, on Person of Interest on Morning Express, James Smart and Sophia Wanuna will be speaking to Senator Otieno Kajuang. Gerald Otieno. Yeah, it's important to get that yes. right. He's the person of interest tomorrow, so any questions you have, you can start tweeting them. Remember, the hashtag is Morning Express KTN. But here's what I want them to ask him. Remember when they were forming the Grand Coalition uh, yes. Cabinet, and remember what he said? Mimi na wife to likua kwa bedroom. To na hide. To na hide. To na hide. To kingwaja you know what? <laughs> I want them to ask him about that. That's my most memorable moment of Kotiano <laughs> Kotiano Kajuang. So anyway, do stick around tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. You don't want to miss that interview. Otherwise, from us tonight, it's... Tukahai. Let's go to Kahai. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Bonui.